Okay, let's begin with our second talk of this session. The speaker is Tom Kornwinder from the University of Amsterdam. This talk is Dick and Liz Askey's World Trip in Fall of 1987. Thank you, Ernest uh, and the organizers. So it's a great honor for me to be able to speak here on this uh, Dick Askey Day. And uh, I will extend it a little bit to make it also a Liz Askey Day. A few months ago, I found back in my files copies of four typewritten travel diaries written by Liz Eski. They were about a big trip Dick and Liz made in the fall of 1987 to Russia, Japan, Australia, and India. They are very well written. And they are a testimony of the cultural interests which Dick and Liz shared. You will not find mathematics in these diaries, but you will find there the names of mathematicians visited by Dick. Some are quite famous, like uh, Gelfand, Zilewinski, Jimbo, and Baxter. I've scanned, edited, and annotated these diaries, and I've made them available on the web. We'll review the first three diaries. In the next talk, George Andrews will speak about the Indian diary. Suzanne Eski, daughter of Dick and Liz, has found back the original handwritten diaries. Parts of it I will also display. You'll read some parts of these diaries during the lecture. She also made available the photos made by Dick during the trip, and some of them will also be displayed. Um, Liz Eski, uh, this lecture is also a tribute to Liz, who passed away last January. She often accompanied Dick uh, on his trips. And many of us have met her on those occasions. In her young years, she attended the women's college Bryn Mawr. Later, uh, in medicine, um, uh, she did two masters. And um, the second master she did uh, was closely connected with her lifelong interest in children's literature. Uh, unfortunately, uh, we um, do not know the titles of Dick's lectures during the trips, uh, except for the talks in India, because there are conference proceedings available. But his talks uh, must have been impressive. Um, um, he, Dick had read them, I think, the height of his mathematical power. The S.K. Wilson memo had appeared only a few years ago in uh, 1985. And one year, year earlier, the Eski Ishmael Manor. Eski Gasper inequality had turned out to be crucial for the branches proof of the Bibelwach conjecture, also quite briefly before. First of all, this was the Ramanujan birth centennial year, and Ramanujan must have been on Dick's mind all the time. There were also um, uh, new developments in mathematics, um, uh, even in special functions and related fields. It was, you may call it a revolutionary year. Uh, I mentioned the quantum groups, which were, were very new then. Um, the heckman opdam polynomials, the McDonald's polynomials, uh, the Dunkel operators, which came already out in preprints in that year, um, the Gelfand hypergeometric functions and the wavelets known already about this, but maybe not yet in full detail, but, but some of the people he met on his trip will certainly have told him more about it. It's the travel schedule. They uh, started in Russia, Moscow and Leningrad. Uh, and then they went back to medicine for two weeks. And then the real world trip started, first to Japan, uh, then on to Australia, Sydney and Canberra. And then to India um, for the birthday centennial. And then finally, uh, uh, for relaxing, um, one week to London. Here they leave from medicine uh, um, uh, on their flight to Moscow. And then they are in, uh, in Russia, only one night in Moscow. Um, and then by night train to Leningrad. Um, then back to Moscow by night train, uh, and um, 
yeah, we will see more about this. I arrived at the Moscow airport on September 1st after the standard three hours of sleep on the plane and inched our way through customs. The man ahead of us, who was evidently visiting Russian relatives and who spoke Russian himself, seemed to have brought in, as Dick phrased it, the contents of a Kmart store. The customs man removed a tall pile of items, including videotapes and a boombox, and the visitor tried his best to argue him out of all those questionable items. Finally, the discussion, the man, and the stack of contraband were taken to a quieter corner. We saw the man rejoin his family later, but we never did find out whether he argued Russian customs out of anything. They whetted his appetite on the man ahead of us. The customs official was ready for us. He went through everything with a proverbial fine-toothed comb. He wondered about the hearing aid which Dick had brought for Gelfand, but the sticky point proved to be an anthology of 20th century Russian literature, specifically a story by Nabokov. Supervisor stood reading for some time before letting us take the book into the country. And here we are in Leningrad, nowadays St. Petersburg, and their hotel was here, the Moscow uh, Hotel. Uh, and then this is Nevsky Prospect. Uh, and on the other end is the Hermitage Museum. And um, halfway is the Steklov Institute, which you see here from the Water sites and very close to their hotel was the uh, 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 Lazarevsky uh, Cemetery, um, and, um, and where uh, Liz went various times, but one time also with Vic and Sergei Khrushchev, um, who was their um, host. And here the picture is in front of um, Euler's tomb. The statue is not uh, related to either. And then uh, in Moscow, uh, where they stayed in the Hotel Akademischeskavia, which is about here, uh, near the Lenin Monument and the Gorky Park. Uh, if you, that's uh, a walking distance to the Red Square. So if you go south, um, quite a walk, maybe you can better take the metro. Uh, you arrive at Moscow State University. That's this um, big um, Stalin building. Um, and there inside is the Faculty of Mathematics and Mechanics. Fund was heading the functional analysis group. Already on their first day in Moscow, they uh, visited Gelfand at home. Um, and it happened to be his birthday. This was earlier taken in, uh, in his home, this photo. And um, uh, later, when they were longer in Moscow, um, Dick had to speak at the Galfond seminar. But uh, the, the night before, he had slept very badly because he was terrorized by bed bugs. Now, you may um, wonder um, if. Um, um, Dick had a hard time in the um, uh, Gelfand seminar. Um, now in, um, some years ago, Rita wrote um, in the notices about the Gelfand seminar, and he wrote that um, 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 younger people in the audience of that seminar um, um, used to be used to be not very attentive. And there was talk about old fashioned stuff uh, like orthogonal polynomials. Uh, but um, for foreign speakers, the audience and Gelfand himself were usually respectful. So, and of course, Dick was a great speaker. So maybe he has even um, 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 uh, made the younger people there enthusiastic for orthogonal polynomials. Uh, Zelewinski and uh, Levitan. Um, um, were uh, close collaborators of Gelfand, uh, had a lot of interaction with Dick, and they invited him also, uh, Liz and Dick also for dinner, and Zerwinski or his wife or both were great cooks, and, and they, they, they had a wonderful meal at Zerwinski's home. Well, um, Dick, uh, no, no, Liz wrote some things about 
uh, fought about the Soviet Union. Well, she was not very enthusiastic about it, but she liked Russian culture, but not so much Soviet culture. Uh, and uh, they met an, uh, an historian in there in Russia from the University of Pennsylvania. And, um, uh, yeah, Gorbachev was only in his second year then as uh, secretary of the Communist Party. And um, he advertised Perestroika. And uh, this, this uh, economist had uh, good hopes about this. And, uh, yeah, it was also a necessary thing that the eco economy was so bad. And uh, yeah, this, this, uh, he was right, on, 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 at least in the short term. There, were, there was Perestroika. But on the long term, uh, we have arrived now. And so it may be a different story. Well, uh, after the intermission in the medicine, they went um, to um, uh, Japan. Um, there they spent for 40 days um, in um, Sendai, Tokyo, Nagoya, Nagano, and Kyoto. Longest stay was in Kyoto for two weeks. Here you see these cities. Uh, they f of course, they, they took the plane to Tokyo and then the bullet train to Sendai, and then back to Tokyo again, and then from Tokyo to Nagoya. Nagoya, they went to a conference in Nagano, and then back again to Nagoya and to Kyoto, and then from Kyoto again to Tokyo, and from Tokyo, the plane to Australia. Sendai, uh, they were hosted by the Igaris, um, uh, uh, Satori Igari, was a harmonic anal analyst, but uh, uh, Dick had problems with the bed bugs in Moscow, and here he had problems with a kidney stone, so he had to go to, to see uh, doctors, uh, x-rays were taken, but uh, well, they, they, they couldn't do anything, it had just to go its natural way, and he had to be patient. Now, with the Igoris, they made a big Saturday trip here to this place, and then on Sunday, they made a trip here to Matsushima at the seaside, and here is Igori and his wife. Then they were in Tokyo, and uh, hosted by Takahashi from Sofia University. And I've met Takahashi in France in the 70s, uh, so he was in harmonic analysis on D groups, and, um, um, uh, collaborating with uh, Aymar and Shiman, Shifman and Faro. There was an um, Oberwolf conference in 1983, which uh, Dick and uh, Shemp and I uh, organized. And there he was also uh, present and gave a lecture. And um, Naomi told me that he was um, uh, working with Takahashi um, in 1987 and that he has met uh, Dick there for the first time. And this photo um, was uh, taken uh, two years later at the Columbus uh, Conference in Ohio, organized by Paul Nevai. But um, what was very nice for Liz that she met there again, her old college friend, Suki. Uh, so so Suki, Ku, Suki Watanabe studied together with Liz Eski at Bryn Mawr. Uh, college in Pennsylvania. And here they are together on the photo. And I uh, do not know who, oh, excuse me, uh, I do not know uh, who is on this uh, statue, but maybe uh, there are people in the audience who have been at Bryn Mawr and know this statue. Uh, uh, Liz's uh, parents lived in Washington state, it's very far from Pennsylvania, and she couldn't afford to go home for all the school breaks. But um, uh, Suki's father was a Japanese diplomat, probably lived in Washington, uh, uh, DC. Uh, so that was much closer. Uh, and then on some uh, school vacations, uh, uh, Liz went, went with Suki to um, uh, um, uh, Suki's home. Suki met us at our hotel. It was so good to see her again. She looks just the same, but different. 
Something I can say about myself as well. Saturday evening, we joined Suki and her husband and the Watanabes for dinner at the International House of Japan, of which Mr. Watanabe is a member. They are grayer, but they look pretty much the same, Mr. Watanabe especially. We had a Western-style meal with a huge army of knives, forks, and spoons, our first Western dinner in almost two weeks in Japan. We learned some interesting things during the conversation. Mr. Watanabe led the Japanese delegation to the Trilateral Commission at one point. Suki's brother Hiroshi's wife has a library degree from UW-Madison and does storytelling all over Japan and abroad, I think Suki said. Suki's husband, Mr. Kubo, showed us a tie class made of a computer chip, a Toshiba chip, which he helped to develop. He, of course, commented on ASCII code and the name ASCII. Everyone who knows computers makes that remark to me. Mrs. Watanabe gave me a lovely Japanese doll. I don't know whether we'll try to mail it back or carry it with us for the next three months. If we get settled in a hotel room long enough, I'll take her out of her box and sit around her pillow to keep me company. Uh, well, then they were in Nagoya and uh, Nagano. And there they were um, hosted by Aomoto, uh, who is very well known from hypergeometric functions, or algebra geometric approach to hypergeometric functions, typically Japanese school. Um, uh, um, uh, Aomoto uh, also went with them to conference in Nagano. Um, and then coming back from Nagano, um, they made uh, trips with the Aomotos uh, to Tsumago and Magome, um, which are very old historical towns. And the old um, road from Edo to Kyoto passed along those two places. Then um, back to Nagoya and then uh, to Kyoto, where they were hosted by uh, Jimbo. And uh, he was one of the pioneers of quantum groups. And uh, it's funny that uh, Jimbo also um, kept a diary, um, but um, less detailed than uh, Liz Eskey's diary. But uh, he sent me the notes he made about um, a walk they made together in Shuka Shuka Green Imperial Villa in the gardens there. Um, it was a bit rainy day. Professor Eski was carrying a long umbrella. Mrs. Eski said he should watch out not to lose his balance. I said he was well poised, a poor jerk which he pretended to appreciate. Back in Tokyo, they went to the Kabuki Theater which, where they had a very great day. And there's no time now to have this read by Suzanne. Now, then they moved on to Australia, uh, where they visited Sydney, uh, where they were hosted by Alf van der Poorten, who was born in the Netherlands, and uh, by um, um, uh, David Hunt. Uh, you see them in the pictures here. And then um, in Canberra, uh, hosted by Rodney Bexner of um, Yang Baxter equation fame. So here you see the Sydney agglomeration, Macquarie uh, University, where they uh, uh, had their lodgings. Here the, the, the center, the, the, uh, the, op uh, the, the opera house. Here Manly Beach, where they went. Here um, the University of New South Wales, where Dick also gave a lecture. So they went to the Koala Park. Um, um, yeah, I think for reasons of time, I will also skip this. Um, and then they beat where they had a funny experience. Um, and then in Canberra, which is um, a, a, a constructed city, quite recent, in fact. And the Liz didn't like it so much. Uh, they, 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 they preferred the more organic cities. Um, but they were staying in the guest house of the Australian National University and it was very close to the Botanic Gardens where they went several times and they enjoyed it this very much. We did go to the Botanic Gardens and returned the following weekend because we think it's the best thing in Canberra. It has only been open since 1970 
but plantings were begun 20 years earlier than that on the site, so there are many well-grown gum and other trees. The gardens are limited to native shrubs and trees, which gives a concentrated image of what grows in Australia, rather than a hybrid mix of what's indigenous to this continent and what's been brought in from other parts of the world. One effect this has is to attract all kinds of birds, and we've enjoyed looking at and listening to them as much as we've enjoyed the plantings. Kookaburra does sit lapping in the old gum tree, just as that old Girl Scout camp song says. And here you can read the, the song, Kookaburra sits on the old gum tree, uh, and so on. Maybe you have also sung it in your youth, or you are singing it with your children or grandchildren. Um, now I would have liked to play this on um, uh, YouTube, but um, PowerPoint doesn't allow it to me. So um, um, we go on and here's the, um, the National Library where she saw some nice posters advertising reading. Uh, and uh, um, now I have also no time to um, let this read by uh, Suzanne, but it uh, was very funny. Um, and then here we are at the end with this photo also taken by uh, Dick of the Australian Ocean. Um, thank you. Thank you very much, Tom. We have any quick questions for Tom. Can you tell us which of the countries Liz liked the best? I think India. So, so that's oh. for the next lecture. But uh, uh, yeah, and then probably for the for the three countries I covered, I think uh, Japan also because of uh, Suki she met again. And uh, but uh, yeah, it, it was not so. She, she didn't like that she couldn't understand uh, the language and then she was relaxed in Australia that she uh, yeah, she could talk where in the usual way with the people and, and understand what they said. Okay, thank you very, very much again, Tom.